Good evening, everyone. I'm Anna Samovska with your TV6 Late News for Sunday, October 23rd, 2011. A suspect is out on bond tonight after a bar fight left one man injured last night. Police responded to a fight at the Roadhouse Bar and Grill in Menominee Township shortly after 9 p.m. A 33-year-old 30, man was found lying on the floor bleeding. Police say they found the suspect hiding in an upstairs room. The 30-year-old male, whose name has not been released yet, was arrested for assault and battery. A Dickinson County woman died of injuries sustained in a car crash Saturday morning. Police say 46-year-old Barbara Hansen of Vulcan was driving northbound on Hamilton Lakes Road south of US-2 in Waukita Township when her car ran off the road and hit several trees. Michigan State Police responded to the site shortly after 10 a.m. Hansen was pronounced dead at the scene. The incident remains under investigation. Aftershocks are still rocking Turkey, and the death toll could reach as many as 1,000 after today's 7.2 earthquake. Rescuers are working into the night in freezing temperatures in a desperate attempt to save those trapped under the massive piles of rubble. The earthquake hit in the far eastern province of Van, and the magnitude was about 7.2. Turkey does have a history of earthquakes, and they have engineers who are highly qualified in designing buildings to resist earthquakes. There are estimates that about 40 or 50 buildings are down in the city of Van, and there are people trapped beneath the rubble. Officials say in the area have said there is so much destruction and so many dead, but it is impossible to put a precise figure on how many have lost their lives. The earthquake, the earthquake hit in such a remote part of the country, in the far east, up against the border of Iran, and it will be difficult to mobilize teams to these remote areas. Authorities in Turkey are calling for an international response to this disaster. Thousands were up for sale again at today's clothing, clothing resale in Nagani. This is the 18th year for the event at the Lakeview School Gym. More than 100 sellers have been registering their items for the sale since May. Clothing for all from infants to adults was available. At the end of the sale, certain unsold items are given away for no cost at the shop for free. The shop for free is important because there's a lot of families out there that need things and, and can't afford them even, even by going to resale shops. And, and of course it benefits us because it helps us get rid of the stuff and we don't have to find other places for it to go. The majority of the funds go back to the sellers, but a portion of the funds will go toward the school's parent-teacher partnership, which sponsors class trips and other school programs. Winter is fast approaching, and for many UP food pantries, that means their stock is quickly depleting, especially in our ailing economy where more and more people are in need. TV6's Noelle McLaren tells us why pantries are struggling and what you can do to help. They're down to their last cans. This is the least amount of food I've ever seen in these shelves. Shelves at food pantries everywhere experience a lull in the fall as they await the holiday food drive season. But Little Brothers, Friends of the Elderly in Hancock are experiencing a new all-time low. It's the first time that, that I can remember in our food pantry that we're this low of food. Now pantry volunteers tell me that these empty shelves will be filled by the holiday season with a lot of fundraisers going on at that time. And those donations generally last them the rest of the year. But this year, with more mouths to feed, that may not be the case. The struggling economy has bred more people in need. In particular, the elderly, whose Social Security checks haven't increased in three years. Cost of living has gone up for food, cost of living for fuel, cost of living for gas, for, for medicine, you name it. And then when you're on a fixed income, as they have been, it's been difficult. Little Brothers delivers packages of food from their pantry to seniors ages 60 and up. And they say their delivery route has increased by nearly 45 percent in the last three months. When I first started the food pantry back in 2001 or 2000, I only had like 18 to 20 people that we filled bags for, and now we're up to 71. The shelves are being depleted faster than food pantries can fill them, and volunteers agree they're going to need more than the usual holiday fundraisers to keep their shelves stocked through next summer and fall. If you'd like to help, we'll show you where you can donate. Visit our website at UpperMichiganSource.com and click on the news story. Noel McLaren, TV6 News, Hancock. Food isn't the only thing needed this time of the year. With rising energy costs, people will also struggle to heat their homes in the winter, especially the elderly who live on a fixed Social Security check. That's why Little Brothers, Friends of the Elderly, and Hancock holds a wood-cutting event each fall. 
Wood burning can be a more reasonable heating option. Volunteers from AmeriCorps and Michigan Tech gathered in Portage Township, Tapiola, and Calumet to chop up firewood for the elderly. It's been a really, really hard economic time these last couple of years. Gas prices and everything are up. So it's a godsend that we are able to do all of this. This year, Little Brothers in Hancock cut about 125 cords of wood that will hand out to more than 100 seniors. Well, it seemed like it was a bit chilly and rainy also to be cutting wood outside. Yeah, we did have that rain pass through the air today, although lots of it actually is expected overnight tonight. You can check out the high today, actually near the normal 48, normal 49, so it wasn't too chilly out there in most areas. Uh, the record 79 means it was pretty warm back in 1963. And check out the record low of single digits, 9 degrees. That's the first time we've seen that this month today. And looking outside at the radar and satellite, generally plenty of clouds across the all, entire Upper Peninsula. But you can see there are thunderstorms across the western counties right now and much heavy rainfall across the central counties. All of this is pushing eastward and we're expecting it to end throughout the overnight hours. We'll get the details on that with Predictor 6 coming up in the forecast. Yeah. All right, thanks, Wesley. Well, still to come tonight, bar owners and bartenders get a lesson in reasonable service, responsible service. Plus, statewide college students discuss campus concerns when we come back. Bar owners and bartenders know firsthand the challenges of handling overserved customers. That's why certified trainers from a program called TIPS offer classes for responsible alcohol management. The classes talk about actions bartenders or servers can take when dealing with minors or intoxicated customers. The students then act out different bar situations. So I can, I can get just this training gives people a lot of different ways that they might handle a situation so that they have the possibility to be effective if something does happen. It also helps to reduce liability because the establishment and the servers of alcohol are personally liable if something happens. It is mandatory for at least one supervisor at every establishment to be certified. Students all across the state are given the opportunity to participate in a statewide dialogue thanks to the Student Association of Michigan. The collection of Michigan's 15 public universities meets once every month, rotating where the meeting is held. This month's was at NMU where the university president, Les Wong, spoke. The group focuses on student advocacy as well as sharing ideas and networking. The SAM Legislative Research Committee focuses on the effects of legislator on students. The conference wraps up on Sunday. It's been almost four years since the 231 House of Muses in Marquette burned to the ground, leaving the under-21 crowd with no place to go out and experience live music. But All Ages Music has a new home. The Upfront and Company began hosting an All Ages rock show this summer, and it's still going strong. They'll host one Sunday a month. Patrons of any age are allowed to enjoy an early evening of live music from acoustic to noisy garage and punk rock. Organizers say All Ages shows keep live music thriving in downtown Marquette. Like to uh, catch the kids while they're still young and uh, you know introduce a new generation of uh, people to live music. We are a live music venue, that's what we do, and it's uh, fairly important to come see shows, I think. Tonight's All Ages show included performances by singer-songwriter Sycamore Smith, Team Awesome, and the Redettes. Entrance costs $5 a person. For show information, contact Upfront and Company. Well, keep those umbrellas handy. Wesley says the rain may be here to stay. He'll have your full forecast next. So, Wesley, do we need to have those umbrellas handy or not quite yet? Well, we'll definitely need them if we're going to have any outdoor plans overnight tonight. Then Monday, we'll actually see a bit of a break in the rain pattern before it kicks up again later on. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, but first let's check on the temperatures around the Upper Peninsula. We've got a range of 40s and actually a 50 at Escanaba right now. Still not quite that cool. you got 46 in Manistique and Newberry, 44 in Marquette, 45 at Houghton Hancock, as well as Lance. A look at the radar shows plenty of rain 
rainfall across the entire area. Most of it focused across the western counties. Most of western Marquette County seeing the heaviest of it. Eastern County is quite heavy as well near Luce and Schoolcraft County. All of this activity is moving off towards the east. It's a wave of energy associated with the low pressure system that's centered just to our north up above Lake Superior. It's draping a cold front down to the south of it and all of it is continuing on its eastward path. There is an additional low pressure system just to the north of uh, North Dakota and that's also going to make its way here. That's the one that's got some cooler temperatures behind it. You can see those indicated on our temperature map here, 36 in Winnipeg and 42 in Bismarck. Looking out ahead of those fronts, much warmer air out ahead of them and you can see the motion of this is to the east but you'll notice in between this system and this system there's a clear air uh, area in between them and that's what we're going to expect to be in for Monday. That's where we'll have those partly cloudy skies, a few lingering showers early on, but generally no rainfall on Monday until much, much later on in the evening into Tuesday. That's when we'll have another warm front push into the area and that'll increase our rain chances for sure on Tuesday, bringing in mostly cloudy skies along with it. We'll be back with more on your forecast next. So, taking a look at Predictor 6, we can see the rainfall still across the area overnight, and then it pushes on out of here. We get in that clear slot for most of Monday, so we're not really expecting any rainfall. Maybe a few clouds activated by lake effect, but other than that, mostly clear skies. And then, on Tuesday, we get a quite a bit of rainfall from that approaching warm front from the south, so you'll definitely need the umbrella then. For Monday, overnight lows uh, tonight into Monday morning, we can expect most of the cooler areas to be across the inland uh, here. Most of the warmer or not so cool areas across the eastern UP. And then here's your loads for Tuesday night, even chillier across most of the areas. And then for Wednesday, here's very chilly air making its way into, into the area once we get another cold front passing through on Tuesday. And then we might see, we may see a chance for frozen precipitation afterwards. None of that tonight. All the, the precipitation will be liquid in form, 34 to 39, your range for the lows. Southwesterly winds changing over to westerly for the western UP, lots of west there, at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, your high temperatures will range from 51 in the north to 55 in the southern UP. We'll have those winds mainly out of the west, a little breezy across the northern areas, 12 to 18 miles per hour, partly cloudy skies and lingering rainfall in the morning, but then it turns into sunshine throughout the daytime hours, and as your TV 68 forecast shows, that sunshine goes quickly away as we move into Tuesday. Plenty of rainfall then and some even lingering on for the rest of the week, possibly changing over into snow later on once we get to Wednesday and Thursday. Your part of the UP tonight shows a beautiful October sunset sky over the Escanaba River. If you want to send in your photo, please visit our website at UpperMichiganSource.com. That looks nice. It looks like we're slowly going into the 30s and 20s overnight. Yeah, soon it will be there permanently, and then we'll be struggling to even stay that warm, if you want to call it that. All right. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Thanks, Wesley. <laughs> Coming up, the high school football playoff matchups have been announced. Mike Bedard will run down the Upper Peninsula matchups next. But first, your lottery numbers. Hello, hello everyone. The second season has arrived for 23 Upper Peninsula football teams. That's a new record thanks to eight-man football where all seven UP squads qualified this year. We'll start though in Division Two, 11-man football. Marquette wins the longest road trip award, about 400 miles to Fenton to beat the 7-2 Tigers. Coach Dave Hillier says uh, Fenton runs a lot of spread offense and this game should be Saturday at 1 o'clock. To Division Four, where Escanaba is a number one seed and will host Ludding the Ludington Orioles in a first-time matchup between the schools. They have not arranged a date or a time. The Eskimos, though, are 6-0 at home this season. Menominee could host three games in Division 5. The Maroons entertain the Kingsley Stags Saturday at 3 p.m. Central, 4 Eastern. Menominee defeated the Stags to end the 2009 and 2010 regular seasons. Iron Mountain will be at home to welcome the Braves of Towis area in Division 6. This is a first-time matchup, too, and it should be, it, it is noon Central Time, 1 o'clock Eastern Time on Saturday. Also in Division 6, Calumet travels to McBain to challenge the, Rambler, the Ramblers. We figure that's a Saturday afternoon game in a first-ever matchup as well. In Division 7, West Iron County meets Ironwood Friday, 6.30 Central Time. The Wycons defeated the Red Devils 22-17 on September 16th. Also in D7, Westwood takes another shot at Ishpeming Friday at 7 p.m. in the second Battle of Ishpeming this season. The Hematites blank the Patriots 18-0 on September 16th. The busy Division 8 starts with Ontonagon traveling to North Dickinson Friday at 6 p.m. Central, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. The last meeting was in 2008. 
a Nordics 72-37 win. Ouch. The Stevens Eagles visit Forest Park Friday at 6.30 Central, 7.30 Eastern time. The Trojans defeated Stevenson 42-7 in the 9 playoffs. Munising gets a rematch with St. Ignace in the shadow of the Mackinac Bridge Saturday at 1 o'clock. The Saints beat the Mustangs 36 6 on September 30th. Rudyard will visit Hillman. The date and time have not yet been announced. In eight-man football, Posen goes to Cedarville for a rematch. The Trojans won in the season opener 39-0. No time, no date as of yet. Engadine travels to Brimley. No time yet, but Engadine just defeated Brimley 38-14 on Friday. Mid-Peninsula gets a short trip to Evan to face Superior Central on Saturday. The Cougars don't have lights, so if it's got to be on Saturday. Superior Central ran past the Wolverines 58-24 on September 16th. And Rapid River hosts you and Trout Creek. No announcement yet. Remember, these times and dates could change in the next few hours as well as the next few days. And if you missed any of that, head to our website, UpMissionSource.com, in the sports section. Click in the Friday Night Fever section, and you can get all those dates and times as they roll in. Today, next to Lake Superior today, as Northern Michigan took on Northwood in women's soccer. 61st minute already, 1-0 Wildcats. Becky Schmidt. A cross off the keeper's hands right to Casey McCary for the tap-in, and it's 2-0 Northern. 87th minute, it's a 3-2 ball game, and Tanya Sidney, the cross in front of the box, and it's going to go off the post and then off Allie Miesner, and it bumps it right in. Sidney gets credit for the goal, though. Either way, it's 3-3, and we're going to overtime. In the next recession, Amanda Watson with the PK after a yellow card in the box by Northern, but she hits the crossbar, and we play on into the second overtime, the 110th minute if you're counting at home. Missy Moore, the corner kick, and then it gets lost in the box in the crowd of feet. It gets cleared, but right to Amelia Johnson, who toes it right off the crossbar and into the net. Game over. Northern wins 4-3 in double overtime in a thriller next to Lake Superior. On the scoreboard today, Michigan Tech gets three goals from three different girls, and they top Saginaw Valley 3-0 to win that one. And in Midget AAA hockey, the Marquette Electricians beat the Sioux Indians 7-0 twice yesterday. Well, they settled for a 3-3 tie early, very early this morning, about 10 a.m. Too, too early for this guy to get up this week, actually. All right, never mind the hockey. I waited and waited. No Bears win. You didn't the make Bears it? win 24-18 against Tampa Bay in London. How's that for you? Gotta love my Bears. The Bears. The Bears. Well, thanks. Bill's <laughs> off for all you Buffalo fans out there. <laughs> thanks, Mike. Sure. <laughs> Still to come tonight, children dress up for prizes and fun in the spirit of Halloween. Finally tonight, with Halloween approaching, several kids had the opportunity to celebrate at a free party. At the Country Lanes in Ishpeming, kids dressed up in all kinds of spooky, funny, and even cute costumes. During the party, a costume contest was held. Winners earned prizes like free movie passes or candy. Every year we get someone who sets the bar for originality, um, and that, that gets most original. But, you know, it depends from year to year. Sometimes it's uh, whatever... Uh, movie is out at the time, you'll get Transformers, a bunch of those, or you get a lot of princesses. All sorts of carnival games were sure to keep the kids occupied. This is the 20th year for the party. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Friends is next. Have a great night.